the most egregious lies that have been told to the American public. What do you? What are some of these that you think over the past few years that are maybe even ones that are still considered widely held to be truths? Yeah. Oh man, there's a lot. Um, to keep it safe, I'll say the first one that came to mind instantly was safe and effective. Mm-hmm. Yeah, of course. <laughs> and I'll, yeah. I'll leave it at that. Yeah. Um, Trust the science. Yes. <laughs> uh, but I think that entire era. Um, I think that the that obviously is very profound and super important, but I think that the one that we face that's happening now is that you can have a conventional war between nuclear powers. Mm. That is an absolute lie. Mm-hmm, 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 like mm-hmm. We understood that throughout the decades of the Cold War, that if you ever have a, a, a hot war between Russia and America or the USSR and America, uh, it means the end of life on Earth. And I think it still means that. And there is a lot, there is a massive movement all over the world from basically the entire NATO alliance Mm -hmm. uh, to persuade, read, psychologically manipulate Mm -hmm. the people of the world to think that you can in fact have a conventional war between NATO and Russia. They ain't going out like that. Yeah. I I, I just, I do not understand like this, this, incredibly high stakes game of chicken yeah. where the consequences if they if they're wrong yeah. is the end of humanity right and we're not having that discussion right i think it's just it's an unbelievable travesty on a scale i can't even really put into words that'll drive it across to your audience it's like how important this fucking thing is uh it's crazy it's absolutely crazy how in the flying fuck could anyone be convinced that a war between new, two nuclear powers could not escalate to nuclear exchange. How I don't understand what argument would, almost in that sentence, it's like by definition, if they're nuclear powers, what's the old saying? All is fair in love and war. You don't think the nuclear power is at some point of the escalated conflict going to resort to nuclear force? Right. And you don't think if someone uses, one country uses nuclear force, that the, the target of that nuclear force is not going to retaliate Similarly, like how, what I mean, logic can be brought to bear on that? All, all you have to do is flip the circumstances and say, if it was happening to America, yeah. do you think that we would go down without of turning course. to nukes? Of course. We would use the nukes. Yeah. You know that they would. hundred yeah. percent yeah, they would. Yeah. If, if we use the nukes without having that. that <laughs> exactly. Yeah. There was no existential threat to America and we use <laughs> nuclear weapons. Um, I mean, the difference, obviously, during that junction is we were the only ones with them. Yeah. So we could actually do so. As soon as there was other countries, and now there's lots of countries that have nuclear weapons, mm-hmm. it basically took them off the table as, you know, first strike cap- capacity and all this stuff. Mm-hmm. But now you have, I mean, Zelensky has has advocated multiple times in this two and a half year long war to first strike Russia. And I'm like, dude, there is no first strike. What are you fucking talking about? Like you, as soon as you launch, First they know. Is the last strike. Yeah, yeah, they launch too. That's yeah. how it goes down. Everybody yeah. knows this. Mm-hmm. They have they have war gained this a, a, a million times at the State Department. Like they know, or or I should say, uh, you know, Department of Defense. Oh. They all know. So it's just a lie. Um, it seems as if it's a bluff. Putin's trying to call ours. We're trying to call his. And it's just like at some point, if particularly if if Russia is going to lose this war which i don't think they're going to but say they they actually bring in nato troops into western ukraine to try and push the russians out of the east i think there's a distinct possibility that putin trying to once again call our bluff launches a low yield nuclear mm-hmm. warhead somewhere maybe not on you know a city or anything crazy mm-hmm. But I mean, it's crazy to use a nuke period, but yeah. I'm saying he does it as a signal like, look, mm-hmm. I am not playing. Yeah. And then what is the response from NATO? And I, I don't know what they'll do. I mean, th- this is the trap that, that everybody knows exists with kind of this nuclear brinksmanship. Yeah. Um, and we're just playing with it without any, any public debate. Like th- that's the thing that disturbs me most. There was like wall to wall coverage when you had the Cuban missile crisis. Mm-hmm. Like it was the biggest mm-hmm. story in the world because everybody understood was, what was on the line. Mm-hmm. We have been basically in a two plus year Cuban missile crisis and we don't even talk about it. And I just think that's a catastrophe. Um, so <clears throat> would it be fair to say that you were concerned that 
the prospect of mutually assured destruction is not being taken seriously enough. Yes, exactly. Is that is this another thing where we've just become desensitized to it because it's been around for so long? Like, is this another thing where we need to feel the pain of fucking nuke going off somewhere? Before yeah, we... well, let's hope not. Um, I mean, there are, like, in fairness, there are a lot of people that understand the risk that we're facing, and I'll actually be in D.C. this weekend uh, to do a rally like end the wars rally on Saturday and then a defend the West rally with RFK jr. And Tulsi and a whole bunch of people. Well, so that's, that's Brett Weinstein saying, right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Oh, very cool. So that'd be awesome. Yeah. I wish you much success with that, but yeah. it's like, we need it. What is, what the hell, man? What is this impulse in us that this war mongering thing? Like what, what, it's so frustrating to me because I think me I, maybe too. this is the libertarian because the libertarian knows the more peace, the more population even, <laughs> the stronger the property rights, the greater the division of labor, the greater the prosperity we all experience. Yeah. Such a, but such this a other, simple recipe. Yeah, but this other like Malthusian flavored technocratic utopian site like thinks we need to control population, shrink population. Right. And it's like that actually creates the opposite of everything good in life. Like literally less peace, less trust, less goods, less prosperity, yep. and shorter lives, lives, lower standards of living. Like uh, the list goes on and on and on. It's just literally like one dark path or the, the light path. Right. Why can't we just, fucking... why can't we just go towards the light? Yeah. What is, what's um, going on, man? I don't, look, I mean, this is, this is something I've struggled with a lot because I've never been a religious figure. You know, I've, yeah. I've always been agnostic and it like, it does feel very good versus evil-y. Yeah, <laughs> you know, yeah, it does, yeah, man. Yeah, um, yeah. When, you're, when you're up against people that think that there's too many human beings, yeah. you're like, I don't know how you conclude anything other than like, oh, these people are, you know, That's misanthropes. A, yeah. like, they don't like humans. Right. Um, and I love humanity, you know, and yeah. I want to see more of us and I want to yeah. see more peace and prosperity and all those things. So I think that's kind of the easy dividing line between, you know, what side of this fight are you on? Yes. Um, but yeah, it's bizarre that so many people <laughs> yeah. want less of us. Yeah. And that is, I mean, that that's a psychological disease, right? If you, if, especially if you're a living human and you're saying, I think we need less humans. It's like, well, what, what, why are you still here? Yeah. Why are you living and breathing? What you're actually saying, like your actions again, speak louder than your words. You're saying, I think we need less of you. Yes. Right. That's what it act. If you translate it properly. <laughs> Right. If you listen to Yuval Noah Harari, yeah. he's very, very famous for this type of talk. And it's like, it's like I don't see you opting out. Yeah, <laughs> you know, like, exactly. Like, um, I think there's just an obvious uh, elitism that comes with yes. that mentality. Like, no, no, no. There's useless eaters. And then there's me, you know, right, the, the right, technocratic right, right. elite yes. that ought to be dictating who stays and who goes. The hubris. Right. So is that maybe the the core of this is the hubris that's part of it for sure yeah i i it's very hard for me to put myself in that mindset yeah it's very foreign to me yeah yeah i try to like try to look at it from a human perspective and you know even those that do great evil often think they're doing good so it's typically more like they have well you know what we used to have uh uh, eugenics and things like this, right? Like the yeah. eugenicists thought they're doing good for the human race, for osten ostensibly, I'm not sure. At least that's how they sold it. But obviously that's not a thing, right? It's very unethical and immoral to uh, artificially breed people for certain outcomes. And yeah. it's also it also contradicts natural selection, which we actually don't know what we're going to need to adapt to, hence the the indispensability of human freedom, right? You need to let leave people free to adapt to the unknown, whatever it may be. Mm -hmm. And so I try to approach it like, all right, what do they actually, what's the actual good that they think they're doing here? But I feel like maybe it's just this economic ignorance, this deep economic ignorance. Yeah. A scarcity what, mindset. You yeah. Know, that like from my vantage point, I think from a more healthy outlook is that like the more people there are, the more minds there are to solve the problems that we face. Yeah. And therefore, that produces the best outcome. So I would like to see more people, not less. Yes. Um, 
but they have the complete inverted mentality. I think it kind of goes back to communism and how like no matter how many times it fails, like, well, we'll get it right this time. Yeah. Um, I think that's kind of how the eugenics school of thought works too. Yeah. It's like, it's a really bad idea, but it's defeated. It mm -hmm. rears its ugly head again and it's kind of cyclical. Yeah, so I guess we're just always going to be dealing with our dark side and then the fight a little bit the fight is in the psychological space to determine you know i'm actually a really optimistic guy i tend to be in general yet i don't know how the content on this show often drifts into the darkness but i think i think it's just like looking at the looking world, at reality looking at reality yeah it's, it's, um, we're going through a tough time yes indeed but we, humans are resilient we're strong we're adaptive we've For been sure. through literally that's all of human history is us going through tough times so we can get through this thanks for watching if you enjoyed this episode click here to find more just like it and here to find our most recent episode also make sure to like this video to help shine light on the corruption of money and be sure to subscribe to this channel to stay connected